opening. That one's spinning. That one's spinning. It's always gotta be one. Oh, that's not an easy angle for a lefty. Um, I'm going to take some questions on there. Okay. Just backing off the slack adjuster so I can get the brake drum off, hopefully. But I've never had this brake drum off on this bus. I shouldn't have applied for muscles yet because the heavy part's coming up here. Okay. <laughs> Never been off. Let's see what it looks like. So, typical silver size. Hand me my phone there so I can help the Patreons out with this. Okay, you want to explain that again? I'll switch phones with you here. Um, uh, did you get the part about the brake drum earlier? Huh? Mm -hmm. So, on a silver size, there's a gap between the brake shoes, so you'll always have a little bit of a uh, wear on the brake drum, where you know you have a hump in the middle. Um, but obviously, I have a broken brake. Uh, surface there where the corner of it's missing that needs to, again, need to be replaced and the bushing up here is too loose that's too much play it's supposed to wiggle just a little bit definitely not that Um, red is very different compared to most modern stuff where it's a male gear that goes into a female gear as opposed to modern ones where this is just larger and they just go on these studs. Not really sure why they thought it was a better idea. Um, these are actually easier to take apart but there's a lot more gaskets and seals in here because you've got four different sides that it can leak on. Okay. I want to keep this out of the dirt. Those teeth are beveled. Ah, so some of the dowels came out with it.
It's like, how many parts can an axle have, right? <laughs> the next part is a seal that's keeping the lube out. When you work on a silver sides, if you replace this seal, You have to, they only make it for the modern one that doesn't have all these big extra dowel holes. So you'll have to pre-drill these extra dowel holes for these guide dowels on here. You'll have to drill those yourself, just so you know. So you'll never be able to find the one with those like, actual extra holes in it. Okay, my big wheel nut socket. that on with a hammer because of some yahoo with their chisel. Clean that up. Can I have a towel please? Just with my fingers that was about a it's less than a half a turn but a little bit further than it should have been. Can't say it wasn't greased. Not sure why I wiped my hand off a second ago. <laughs> Yeah, and you also need to take your ring off. I just realized you have that back on. Yeah. This hub already is expensive to replace what we got going on, so let's hope this is good. It wasn't so slimy. Uh, you're dripping all over your yeah, see that. impact. I think today's clothes might get thrown out. Well, what I'm seeing so far looks good, but I can't see much because it's covered in grease. Your glasses are right there because you dropped them. <laughs> They're not on my head. Uh, Scott? I just greased my head up. No, you just greased my leg up. Oh, hey, don't stand by that. <laughs> you pushed it over on me. <laughs> it didn't get you, yeah. barely. There's no scratches or gouges in them. That's the good part. There's a couple little discolorations. I want to get them get them clean to look at them, but I don't know if they can. Sludge that just came out of. <laughs> Almost no lip on the front. Feels nice. in the back there. It's to be expected. Obviously it was leaking a little bit around here. The back side, which is where you can do your inspection on, where I've been keeping an eye on that it hasn't been leaking. Doing pretty good.
say that that's actually where the leak was coming from back here was this gasket that just came off like nothing and came off in pieces and I can see it's wet underneath of it so it actually wasn't the seal that was leaking it's this gas carrier that's leaking but you can tell by how wet it is on the gasket itself Just watch where you're dripping. The bucket's back there. No scratches, no gouges, no weird coloring. It's smooth all the way across. Obviously, I need to inspect it a little bit more than that, but the initial inspection is that that will be going back on. If everything else works out already. Well, darn it. If only it didn't have to go all the way around. <laughs> We'd be in good shape. I don't know what this is. repeat that for me please uh, that bushing's not bad it's tight back there this was there was no spring on it giving it any tension the spring had rusted off well, I'll look at it closer but I think that's what the problem was it's important like on modern brakes where it's one solid shoe across there one spring comes off and it's just a little cocked in there but it still returns and everything but that's been riding in there. But it's going to have to get turned anyways. You can see right here, this bearing was installed. Looks like it says seven. Somebody engraved it. It's either a one or a seven, the first digit. I think it's a seven. Dash 27, no, dash 22. Dash 55. So this bearing is from 1955, which is probably how old the other ones were too on the bus. So um, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? 1955, still rolling. The bearing's not bad. I mean, we're gonna replace the race, so we gotta replace the bearing, but um, it actually looks really good. I mean, it's gotta have millions of miles on it. It would have still been in Greyhound service in 55. These are uh, Curad Band-Aids. They are the best ever for your fingers. So they're super long. So the bandage part is on one side and then there's an extra long part. So, do this right. Nice germ-free environment I got here. But where I just hurt my finger, ripped the skin off, I can put this over it. And I pull this around, and it wraps around a couple of times. So if you've ever had band-aids on your fingers, when you move your fingers and they rip apart and don't stay on, these are great for that. So I'll post a link in the description to them, because you can get them on Amazon. They're great. All right, it's about 1230. Everything's all back together. 
So it took about three hours to tear everything apart, inspect it, see what needs to get ordered, put back together, because it's going to be weeks before I can get those parts. Uh, those brake linings are probably going to be the hardest thing to get. Um, so, but now I know it needs to get ordered. I thought it was impressive that the wheel bearings were stamped. They were put in in 1955. That's pretty cool. Um, I mean, they look like they were in decent shape. There's some problems with the races and stuff, so we're going to put all new on there, but I'm sure I would have got another 100,000 miles or more out of them. Um, so yeah, it sucks having to put things back together, uh, but I need to be able to have it mobile and we live in it here. So I don't want it rocking back and forth. I didn't want it falling off the jack. I don't want it up on blocks. So it wasn't too bad. You know, it's like an, maybe an hour to, to tear it all apart again. And uh, if nothing else, it'll, uh, it'll look better out here. Not look like a junkyard. Um, so one more thing done, everything's back together. It's gonna rain here in a little bit. We're gonna take it easy for the rest of the day. I think that was a lot of hard work. I definitely do not like working in this chert. Uh, you just lay a tool down and it gets that gravelly chert stuff stuck to it. It sucks. So it really makes me want to get my concrete pads out here even more. Plus all the mess on the tires. That was just ridiculous. But um, yeah, I do not like working on the chert. It's my baby.